today I'm back with Drew and we've done these DIY collabs several times so I'll be sure to link some more down below if you haven't seen them but for today we're doing 20 so 10 on my channel and, and 10 on my channel so 20 DIYs for 2017 or if you just want to spice up your room in general also both of our Instagrams will be linked down below I'm doing a giveaway for 2017 on there so you may want to enter that and yeah I'm sure you'll find something in this video that you like. There's 20 total options for your That's room. So, so many. This took us so long to film. Yeah, like, this has taken longest. an entire week to complete. And it'll probably take us another like seven week hours editing. Time. Yeah. So we hope you guys enjoy this. And if you enjoy this style where there's just a ton of DIYs, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. And be sure to subscribe to Drew's channel. The link to his video will be in the description box down below. And that's all. Let's jump right into it. DIY number one is this really cute mirrored jewelry shelf. So for this, you're going to need a standing sign. I picked this up at my local craft store. Some extra wood, a round mirror, some E6000 glue, a pencil, and lastly, a small saw and a ruler. So you're gonna begin by taking that smaller piece and you're just going to cut it directly in half and this is gonna create your shelves. So you have two little shelves. Then I just took some shoes and propped up the sign. That way it will all dry evenly. So I added a generous amount of glue onto the back of that round mirror, and then I just strategically placed it over to the left-hand side of the sign. Make sure you do this right, because the E6000 glue is really strong. Then I just kind of laid out those shelves to see where I wanted to place them before I then again added some E6000 glue. Now the shoes are key because you want this to dry on a flat surface or else the little shelves can slide around. So once you're done with the first shelf, I then secured it. Again, be very careful, make sure you're placing it properly. Then I added the second shelf, and after it's dried for a few hours, you're all done with this really cute wooden mirrored jewelry shelf that I thought was really Urban Outfitters inspired. DIY number two is this little floating banner that turned out super cute. So for this, all you need is some sticker letters, some clear string, a hot glue gun, and some scissors. So this is super simple. Basically what I did was I just cut it out like the letters that I was using. I decided to just make it say good vibes, but you can either just use the backing that's already on the stickers, or if you like, you can, um, apply the sticker to a cardstock if that makes sense but I felt that the cardboard that these were on was good enough for this so I just cut out like a larger portion of the stickers and then I went in and did all like the detail cutting cut off the edges and the middle of the O's and things like that and all you have to do after you're done cutting those out it's super simple but you're just gonna apply it with a glue gun I'm showing you guys this the best that I could but because the string is clear it's kind of hard to see so I just took two different strands I kept one word on each strand of the string if that makes sense so I'm just like here measuring it out and then you just take like the smallest amount of hot glue on the back and then kind of flip it over and apply the string. This part can get a little tricky but I just kind of like did it the best that I could. There's really no right or wrong way to do this. Just make sure that you're spacing out the letters as much as they need to be because you don't want the letters to be too close or too far apart so I just kind of like held the string down and let it dry a little bit with the hot glue and repeated that process and it dries instantly and it turned out absolutely amazing I really love the way that this looks DIY number three is this Urban Outfitters inspired pillow that I absolutely love so for this all you're going to need is a blank pillowcase some acrylic paint and a paintbrush for this, I began by adding a piece of cardboard into the middle of the pillowcase just so the paint doesn't bleed through onto the other side of the fabric, but that's totally optional. And I'm just kind of drawing on the face. Honestly, this was inspired by an Urban Outfitters pillow, so I just looked at the photo of the picture for inspiration, if you will. So if you want, I will link it down below so you guys can see it. But I basically just drawing it on with the acrylic paint. I started out by putting like a lighter coat of the paint and then I darkened it up at the end. And acrylic paint is great because it will stay on when you wash it. And that is pretty much all you do for this lovely pillow. For DIY number four, we're gonna make this recycled rustic candle. So for this, we're gonna need an old candle, a tree stump, some E6000 glue, scissors, candle wicks, a container, and a pan. So be careful doing this, but you're basically going to set your pan to low heat and you're gonna melt the candle wax from an old candle for this. Now be sure that the bottom of the candle has no labels on it or else obviously it's going to burn, but you just heat the wax and it will get soft. I took the new candle wick and dipped it in some of the wet wax to secure it to the bottom of my new little vase. I added these two sticks just so the wick would stay in the center. That's completely optional. Um, sometimes it will just stay on its own. And then you just pour in the empty candle wax. 
Then I applied a layer of this E6000 glue and then you just place your new candle on top of it and you have your brand new recycled tree stump candle that looks super trendy. Next up is this minimal key holder. So for this, all you're gonna need is a smaller version of that tabletop sign you saw earlier, some screw in hooks, a pencil, and lastly, you're gonna need a ruler. Super, super easy, quick DIY. I just measured out where the hooks would be placed evenly for all three. I recommend using a pencil because I did mess up on this portion at first. So the screw-in hooks are kind of difficult to work with. The best way I would say to do it is apply pressure when screwing them in, and you're just gonna repeat the same process for all three of the hooks. It's as simple as that, and then you're all done with your key holder. It's super minimal, but I feel like it looks like it would be super expensive if you purchased it at a store. For DIY number six, we're making this abstract canvas art, super simple. So for this, you're going to need a blank canvas, some acrylic paint, a foam brush, and then something to dip the paint on. So there's really no right or wrong way to do this. This is inspired by a painting that I saw online. It's basically just like dashes of paint. So I would recommend not using a ton of paint, just dipping the brush lightly, and you just kind of want to create little marks and smudge it out, if you will. I feel like it's super simple to create, but it also looks like a really cool, just like artsy painting. So I went in and just like added a majority of what I thought looked good. And then I went back in after you'll see on the next clip with just a little bit of extra slashes and dashes to spice it up a bit. But I really love the way this looks, especially layered with other photos in my apartment. I just love the way that it turned out. DIY and number seven are these concrete coasters. So for this, you're just going to need some concrete mix. I found these really cool coasters at Ikea, which make this DIY super simple. Some small mirrors and then something to mix your concrete with. I just used a cup and a plastic spoon. So for this, you're just gonna mix like, I always do equal parts of the concrete and the water, but it's pretty much up to you. You're gonna see that you want it to be like a pancake batter consistency, if you will. And then you're just gonna like slowly apply the concrete into the middle and I just kind of smoothed it out just so it was like nice and even. You can even like kind of slowly tap the coaster down just to make sure that it like goes through evenly. The only difference with the mirrored one is you're just gonna go in and add the mirrors. This is gonna take about 10 hours to dry but after it is all done you have these really cool coasters that I absolutely love the way that they turned out. DIY and number eight is this West Elm inspired mirror. And to make this, you're going to need a blank mirror, some copper contact paper, hammered spray paint, scissors, painter's tape, a blank mirror, and lastly, you're going to need a paper bag or some sort of paper. So I'm just sectioning off the bottom left-hand corner. That is where I'm going to add the first triangle. So I'm adding my painter's tape, and then after I add the painter's tape, I'm going to place the paper bag just so the spray paint doesn't get on the rest of the mirror. After that's taped off, I'm gonna go ahead and add a layer of this hammered spray paint. I love the way this dries. It has a really cool hammered effect to it. So once you're done spraying that, it dries really easy, and then I'm adding some more painter's tape and I'm creating like little strips going back in with some white acrylic paint just to kind of create these like little rustic lines that the mirror at West Helm had that I really liked. So you're just going to add that and once you're letting that dry, I took my copper contact paper and I added another triangle in the upper left hand corner of that and then once that's dry, you can remove the painter's tape and you're all done with your West Elm inspired mirror. DIY number nine is Pinterest inspired and for this you're going to need some wax paper, some cardstock, two pieces of wood, some twine, a piece of cloth, a spray adhesive, and lastly some scissors. So for this you're going to begin by taking your cardstock and spraying it with a layer of the spray adhesive and then you're going to apply the wax paper. Make sure to smooth it out and don't have any bubbles. You're then going to print out whatever image you want on the waxy side of the paper. And then you're going to flip it over and apply it to your cloth. Make sure that you're pressing down firmly and you don't move the picture, otherwise the ink will smudge and whatever photo you're using will obviously smudge on that. So I also took a piece of wood just to make sure it was nice and even and smoothed out. After that, you're going to apply your little wood pieces to both edges. So I just kind of like measured it out and took a little bit of hot glue and glued it down. And then the last step is to take your twine and just hot glue that onto the back of it as well. And it dries completely instantly and you're all done with your new little wall hanging. And DIY number 10 is this floating plant that again is super simple to make. So for this, you're going to need a fake plant. You can also use a underwater plant if you could find one, some sea glass and a pasta jar. 
So I'm beginning by adding the sea glass to the bottom of the pasta jar. I didn't add too much, but you wanna add enough to where it can kind of secure down the plant into the water, if that makes sense. So after that, I went in and added my plant, and again, I kind of like shoved it in between the sea glass that is at the bottom, just so it stays in place, because once you add the water, it can move around. So after that, I added water and just filled it all the way up to the top, super simple. And after that's done, all you have to do is kind of push the plant down and close the jar. And it's as easy as that. You have this like new cool little floating plant for your room and you definitely don't have to water it. So those are all my DIYs. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more DIYs. And don't forget to head on over to Drew's channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.